Hi again then guys and welcome to another instalment of my podcast style series, Beards and Cars, where we talk about a variety of subjects and this one was actually a suggested topic and it's a good one. It's one which certainly deserves a place in a series like this, a more long form video where you can really get into the meat of a discussion and talk to you guys about it down below as we often do and that is Forza versus Gran Turismo, the age old debate. But that's the thing, this is not going to be a debate. Because there is no debate. There is only one where people make it such. So what I mean by that, and any who know my taste in games will know this, I do not favour one franchise over all others. It's not that I don't have a favourite. I might have a favourite in a particular category, but what I mean is that I don't automatically hate everything else. And that is, unfortunately, the very strong mindset currently. And basically that mindset is what I would call the Marvel DC mindset. And it's also Forza and Gran Turismo, unfortunately, as well, where people feel that if you love one, you are obliged almost to hate the other and to rip on it and hate on it as often as possible. Now, if you choose to do that, of course, that's the right of free speech and free thinking, but it's really yourself that you're screwing over by thinking that way, because nobody else really cares whether or not you like the game that they do. They might act as if they do in the moment, but ultimately, you not liking something isn't going to stop them from doing it. So really, you're only screwing yourself over by not enjoying more things than just one. So this is a discussion not about the pros and cons of the games, or which one is better. This is just things that I love about either franchise, and I've picked five things in particular. Five things from the entire Forza franchise, and five things from the entire Gran Turismo franchise, and of course you could do more than five, but I wanted to condense it down to the things which appeal to me the most, and the things which, for those who haven't played both, or at least played some of the games in both franchises, something which you might want to consider. Maybe if you haven't played it, it might be worth playing it if this sounds like it appeals to you. And of course, by definition, you can slap down below what you love about both franchises if you've played them both. If you've only played one, then by all means, slap down what you love. It doesn't have to be five, but of course, don't go to like a hundred or anything ridiculous like that. Again, you can if you want to, but I probably won't read the whole comment if it's that long. But it's a discussion, as always. Things that we love about the games, not things that we hate or things that we think are better or worse. And just before I get into the full list, I do want to do a little bit of housekeeping in a way because I decided to put this out in this video because I need some help from you guys with something in particular. And this may sound strange, given all of the tech-related stuff that I do here on the channel, gameplay capture, audio, you know, all that kind of stuff. I have no clue what I'm doing when it comes to podcasting. I know what it is, but I've never set one up before, and I don't know how to do it. I know it involves RSS feeds, hosting the podcast, having a download uh, link, that kind of stuff, but I'm interested in trying to turn Beards and Cars into a full podcast. Not instead of YouTube, but as well, for those who want to listen to it on the go. And I want to incorporate that into Patreon also. I've tried to do that already, it didn't really work. So for any who are experienced with podcasts, or know for certain what you're doing with it, which in other words means you've probably done it before, then by all means hit me up in an email, you can find the email here in the channel info. So if you do know what you're doing, I would appreciate some help with that. But, with that to one side, Let's get into the video. So first of all, I'm going to switch between the two. I'm not going to go Forza 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then Gran Turismo 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm going to jump between the two for each one. So let's kick it off first of all with the vast majority of my audience, which is Gran Turismo. And this is not GT Sport, it's not GT6, this is the entire series, including prologues, offshoots, I mean there aren't exactly many, you've got Taurus Trophy, but that's about it. So the first thing that I love about Gran Turismo as a franchise is what I'm going to call the visual accuracy. And I don't just mean graphics. This is something far more important, I think, than graphics. And this is something which a lot of people overlook, but it's something which makes something as old as a whole lot of somethings. But <laughs> it's a thing which makes older games like Gran Turismo 1 and 2 still playable for me. And that is when you look at the cars in the game, you know what they are. You know what the car is supposed to be, and even though the pixelated graphics may not age as well, the models of the cars actually really do. 
And that's in particular something that I love about Gran Turismo. The cars look accurate in terms of size, shape, and even the details. That doesn't mean that the graphics are going to be perfect, but I mean that when you see the car on screen, such as the Ferrari, for instance, in this video, it looks like the real thing. It doesn't have wheels which are just a little bit too big or lights that are a little bit too small. It looks like the real car. And that's about much more than graphics. That's about the effort put into mapping the car into the game. And although they've occasionally got some things a little bit off, for the most part, Gran Turismo has a very, very good track record, an outstanding one, in fact, as far as getting the cars to look right in the game using the best available tech of the time. I love that. And for someone like me who drives more often in chase cam than anything else, because as I've said before, I like to look at my car because car design is one of my passions, to me that is a very important thing, to look at a car and not be thinking, this looks nothing like the real vehicle. As an example, for instance, if you look at, let's make it about Forza for a second, if you look at the Zonda C12, on some of the older Forza games, it's quite off. The cabin is too high, the lights are too big, the wheels are too small, and it just looks a little bit weird. Not that that's a, a knock on the franchise, it's just a fact. Test Drive Unlimited, for instance, one of my original pet peeves was that the Ascari KZ1 looks nothing like the real Ascari KZ1. If you look at that car in the game, compare it to the car in real life, it doesn't even look close. It looks more like a Lotus Esprit in the game. So visual accuracy is a very important thing to me, and I love that about the Gran Turismo franchise. Next up is the first thing about the Forza franchise, which I love, and that is the outstandingly good way, especially around Forza 3 and 4, but still to some degree as well now on the Horizon games, etc., the way that they've mapped out the storefront. Because, of course, Gran Turismo has elements now of a storefront. It's not really, it's more of just a community section where you've got liveries, decals, all that kind of stuff that you can download and use. But the reason why I like Forza's way of doing it is because not only they've been doing it longer, but it's the fact that you can actually make a living in the game just from that. And as I think I've alluded to before, at least in comments, if not in videos, I am much more of a businessman when it comes to gaming than I am a driver. I like to tune cars, enjoy driving them, and make a huge amount of money for as minimal effort as possible. And although that sounds lazy, I'm very good at it. For instance, on Forza 4, I used to make custom liveries for people, logos, decals, that kind of stuff. I used to earn hundreds of millions of credits on private commissions just to make stickers for people because there was that kind of money flowing around through the game. That is what I love. I love making big money to just buy hundreds and hundreds of cars, tune them, make custom special projects stuff. That's what I love the most about a game. In fact, that's what I've always loved the most about any game since I was a kid, just having loads of cars to play with rather than just racing them. Racing has always been a means to an end for me, so the storefront really appeals to my core values when it comes to gaming, and I love the way that Forza does that. Not so much, to be honest, on the recent ones, because the system doesn't work in the same way. You get paid for people using your stuff, but back in the day, it used to be a more direct way. They would actually buy it with credits and then use your tune. I prefer that method, because what you earn now, it's not as much as back then. Because basically, if you make the best tune in the world, theoretically now on Forza, somebody could download that and use it, and you would only get paid the same amount as if you made an average Joe tune. Whereas back in the day on Forza 4, for instance, you could charge 50 grand to each person who downloads that tune, and it would be totally worth it because of how quick it was. Again, that worked for me because my tunes were as good as the ones I put on YouTube, but the people could just get them directly. They didn't need to watch a video, they could just slap it straight on the car and start winning races. So I love that. Now moving back to Gran Turismo once again, I'm actually going to stay on the point of the visual side, but now I am going to address directly graphics, because I love the graphics of the Gran Turismo franchise. GT Sport, as far as I'm concerned, is far superior to Forza 6 and 7, and although I said this is not a comparison video in that kind of way, that does need to be said, because although I genuinely adore both franchises for different reasons, it is a simple fact. GT Sport looks better. 
Now, with Forza, you have certain cars which Gran Turismo doesn't, which can give you this false sense of having cool graphics, but that's not really the case. You're just looking at a nice car, and that tints your vision. If you put two of the same car up against each other, you can notice some significant differences, especially when it comes to the details. Stuff like the lighting, reflections... I mean, Gran Turismo was one of the first racing games to pioneer having reflections on the car's body and the windows, so of course it's going to be good. For me, Gran Turismo Sport is the first time in a while that I've been really impressed with the Gran Turismo franchise as far as graphics. GT5 was good, but expected. GT6 was okay, could have been a lot better for sure. Gran Turismo 2 was outstanding for its time. As I said, many of the cars still look pretty cool. The Espas F1 has that amazing uh, nostalgia for me. Gran Turismo 3 didn't really do it for me. It was a bit pasty looking. Gran Turismo 4, as far as I'm concerned, is still the best of the whole franchise. And that pretty much speaks for itself, because even Gran Turismo 6 in 2013 was still using updated versions of the same car models from Gran Turismo 4. So for me, the graphics of the Gran Turismo franchise, especially when it comes to the cars, but also the tracks, that kind of stuff, it's simply better. And it's not to do with overarching stuff like textures, it's more about the small details. Because when you look at, for instance, the replays of Forza 7 videos, I personally find them to be a little bit bland. The cars look a little pasty, and the tracks don't have a huge amount of detail especially not compared to how good you'd expect it to be, given how far along the franchise is. Whereas Gran Turismo Sport, I would say, looks the best it ever has, and certainly looks the most impressive that it has since Gran Turismo 4 for me. Because Gran Turismo 5 looks good, but to me Gran Turismo 4 was more impressive, given especially the console that it's on, and how good many of the cars still look. Next up, moving back to Forza again, I'm actually going to touch on another thing, which is kind of mixed into the storefront, but this is something which Gran Turismo has also dabbled in, and that is the auction house. And it's pretty much for the same reasons as why I love the storefront. I'm a businessman. I like to sell cars, buy cars, make huge amounts of money, and I'm good at that. So when the game gives me the opportunity to do so, I make full use of it. On Gran Turismo, you had the auction house on GT5. Excuse me. But I never had the chance to use that. We don't have it on GT6, we don't have it on GT Sport, and one of the reasons why I want it to come back to Gran Turismo in full effect is because you can get rid of those cars that you win and don't want. You can sell them to people who actually do want them, plus make cash, and a lot more cash than the cars are worth if you just try to sell them yourself, especially if it's a prize car. They're worth next to nothing, if not nothing. And that's something which Forza also suffers from. In some cases, the cars lose a huge amount of value, which again makes the auction, auction house, even, that much more valuable. I used to love using the auction house. I don't use it so much now, because I tend to just win the cars that I wanted, but it's still such a valuable tool. And back in the Forza 3, kind of the Forza 2 days as well, but Forza 3 and 4, especially for me, I used to make a ton of use out of the auction house. Next up, moving back to Gran Turismo, another thing actually which I've always loved about the franchise is the, if you want to call it, fake circuits, the ones which are polyphony digital created tracks in the game. Some of them have resemblances or are based on aspects of real tracks, but they are for the most part made up, in effect, for the game. Stuff like Midfield, Autumn Ring, High Speed Ring, Trial Mountain, Deep Forest, fan favourites. Stuff like one of my personal favourites, Complex String, which I've mentioned before. Those tracks are kind of in Forza as well. Not, not the exact circuits, of course, but Forza has some unique circuits that are created just for the game. But I think that Forza doesn't really try to go for that as much. They try to just go for real circuits, and I'm going to get to that in just a second. But with Gran Turismo, fake circuits have always been a strong part of the franchise. And it's not just a case of filling the game with tracks for the sake of it, or at least it wasn't. You do get the distinct feeling that that was the case with GT Sport, and still is, unfortunately. But in the older games, especially, the fictional circuits are really good. They're very fun, they're very imaginative, and a lot of them are fan favourites, and that speaks for itself. Now, jumping back again to Forza, 
Something which is commonly discussed between the two games is realism, and that's one of the knocks that Gran Turismo fans will often level against Forza fans, that Gran Turismo is, they would claim, more realistic. Now, the problem with that argument is it actually goes both ways. There are some ways in which I would say Gran Turismo is more realistic. However, there are some ways in which Gran Turismo is so off from the reality that it's hilarious. Need I mention the top speeds of cars in Gran Turismo 6? I mean, I rest my case. A 400 mile per hour car is just not physically possible. And, of course, there are land speed record vehicles, but there's a bit of a difference between taking a specifically purpose-built land speed record car that doesn't even have rubber on its wheels, for very specific reasons, and of course it's fitted with a parachute, it can barely turn at all, and it's about 30 feet long, as I said, purpose-built, and taking something like a Viper to 300. Theoretically, you can do stuff like that, but the reality of it is you pretty much die instantly, because the car would just flip, or spin out, or straight up eat its tyres. Some cars, such as the Koenigseggera RS, have been taken up to 285, but again, there's a huge difference between that and what the cars in Gran Turismo can do. I mean, think again to the older games, where you could glitch cars out and do 1400 miles per hour. So don't talk to me about realism when the game has realism in certain ways, but not with others. And this is the thing that I like about Forza on this occasion, is that Forza, I would say, strikes a better balance. And I know that's going to be controversial, but I think Forza strikes a better balance between realism and fun. Because some people define fun as realism. For me, that's not the case, because at the end of the day, they're both game franchises. So if you enter a game, the number one thing that you should want from that is fun. By definition, a game is recreation. So if you go into a game wanting it to be exactly like real life, well, for a start, no racing game ever is that accurate. Because if that was the case, you'd have to pay for tyres, fuel, there would be a threat of death, you'd have complacent team members and pit crew who just quit and move to another team. So don't tell me about realism. No racing game is that real. That would be real life. That would be like VR stuff in the future. But as far as realism goes in driving style, Gran Turismo, I would say, is, for the most part, more realistic. And if you like that, you might be more drawn to it. For me, I think I prefer Gran Turismo's driving style, which might sound weird given that I'm saying this is a point in the favour of Forza, but the thing about Forza that I think strikes the better balance is that it's not just about handling, and that's what the makers of Forza Turn 10 understand. They do a great job, I think, of striking the balance between more realistic physics than, say, Test Drive Unlimited, Project Gotham, Need for Speed, Midnight Club, a lot of games that those kind of people would also play, myself included, but they strike the good balance where they have the kind of fun factor, which those games have, but they're more realistic. So the cars do feel like they're doing 200 miles per hour, especially in certain camera views, the scenery rushes past you like it should. Whereas on Gran Turismo, the feeling of speed just isn't there unless you're driving something like a Tomahawk or a Red Bull and going 100 miles per hour more than any race car ever has. So, to me, that is something very strong in favour of Forza. I've always loved that. And I'm not saying that I want Fast and Furious Nitro Blurs and 16-speed gearboxes. No, of course not. But Forza doesn't do that. Forza strikes a good balance, and I do love that about the game. Now, the next thing that I love about Gran Turismo is the focus that the game has always had, not so much now because of the FIA integration, but pretty much every previous game, they focused very much on having what I would call real-world cars. And I don't mean cars that actually exist, because of course the majority of them do. I mean cars that feel real, stuff that you can actually see on the street. And I know for a fact, because you've mentioned it before, that many of you guys appreciate this as well, and that is that especially in, say, the Gran Turismo 2 or Gran Turismo 4 days, you could go into the game and just pick up something that you could see your neighbour driving. Something that somebody down the street from you probably has sitting on the driveway. Ford Pumas, uh, Mondeos, 
I don't know why I'm only thinking of Fords, but <laughs> you get the idea. Like Peugeot 406s, Renault Lagunas. Now I'm just working my way through the touring cars. But you know what I mean. These kind of cars that are not just real, but you can just see every day, depending on the country that you live in. And of course, they don't cover all countries, but they do a good job of featuring so many different cars from so many different manufacturers and having this distinctly grounded feel to the lineup. It's not just supercars, it's not just Le Mans. They have a good variety and a good selection, especially though when it comes to road cars. And for me, road cars are my favourite. I would choose many road cars over many race cars. And you can see that from my top 50 favourites series. Most of my picks were road cars, not race cars. Now, I love that about Gran Turismo. Forza, on the other hand, has had some real-world cars as well in terms of, you know, normal, everyday stuff. But if you look at the lineup of each game, they've always gone much more for, like, exotic stuff. Sports cars, supercars, hot hatches, super saloons, race cars, and there's nothing wrong with that. I love the lineup on Forza, and again, I'll get to that later. But with Gran Turismo, I do love the fact that they went to the extra the extra effort, went the extra mile of featuring these real-world, normal, what some would call boring cars. And again, this is a personal list, so of course a lot of people aren't going to want those normal cars, but I love that. I'm not necessarily going to use them all, all the time. Some of them I'll probably never use, but having the option is something which I really enjoy. There is a smorgasbord, if you will, in Gran Turismo's car selection that you can choose from, and I love that. Now next up, something that I love about Forza, once again, and this actually harkens back to what I said about Gran Turismo, that I love the amount of fictional circuits. With Forza, for me, it's the opposite. I love the variety and also the specific choices that they made as far as what real-world circuits to include, because Gran Turismo has almost always had a very strong selection of real-world tracks as well. You've got the Nordschleife, La Sartre, Monaco, various others, Laguna Seca, Infineon, some truly great circuits, and many of those are shared between both franchises, but there are certain tracks which Forza has had, does have, has had for a while in some cases, which are excellent tracks, and Gran Turismo still doesn't have them, I hope that many of them do come over to the game, or to the franchise at least, and again, I've talked about that in previous Beards and Cars, tracks which need to return, tracks which need to debut. But I mean tracks like Mugello, Abu Dhabi. I know a lot of people, for whatever reason, don't like Abu Dhabi. I love that track. I don't see what's not to like. Um, not necessarily Infineon, because they've both had that, but circuits which are not as obvious a choice. One of my personal favourite tracks, in fact, it might be my favourite track in the game, on Forza games, Road Atlanta. I just love that track. It's a real-world circuit. It would fit in so well in the world of Gran Turismo. I love that track. Road America. It's an excellent high-speed circuit. Tracks like that where they are real and they focused on those, I really like that. I love, love many of the tracks that Forza has featured. Whereas with Gran Turismo for me, I love a lot of them, but I don't think it's as high a percentage for me. And I'm talking just about the real circuits, not the fictional ones. If you just compare all of the real circuits on either franchise, I think there are probably more of them in Forza that I genuinely love than the ones that I love in Gran Turismo. For me on Gran Turismo, there are only probably two tracks which I genuinely love, and they are the Le Mans and the Nürburgring. With Forza, there are far more. I love Sebring. I love Road America, I love Road Atlanta, a variety of others, and for me that's definitely a point to Forza's favour, which I love about it. Next up for Gran Turismo, the final point is something which I value so much in the older games especially, and for me, Gran Turismo 4 is by far the best that Gran Turismo has ever done in this. Gran Turismo 5 is close, but still not quite as good, and that is having a career mode which is not just big, because it's about more than just being big. It feels weighty. And what I mean by that is every single event in Gran Turismo 4 felt like it meant something. Every manufacturer race, every endurance race, every specific category tournament, be it for Group C 
or Formula cars, they all feel super competitive, even though it's AI that you're up against. They feel like a real tournament, especially for the time when games weren't as realistic on the PS2. It made everything feel like it was worth doing. Whereas, I gotta be honest, the biggest thing that puts me off playing Forza 7, 6, and 5 more than I do, the career mode is repetitively dull. And I love Forza, but I can't stand the career mode. I've played most of the career mode on Forza 7, but I didn't do it because it was fun. I just did it to get the money and unlock the cars. Whereas with Gran Turismo 4, I played through the entire game twice, because I love the career mode so much. And what I love about Gran Turismo as well, in this regard, is that, especially, again, with Gran Turismo 4, and I would say actually probably more so than any other game in the franchise, you could actually make strategy guides about how you could go through career mode in an efficient way. And I actually started to do that, and I found that you could play through the majority, even, of the Gran Turismo 4 career without buying a single car. You could just buy the car that you're forced to at the start of the game, and then just use whatever you win after that to progress through the career. There are certain events where if you do them earlier, you'll get a great car to start the game with, and stuff like that. I love that kind of career where it almost feels like a story in the way it pans out, because there is a strategy to it. And if you waste money on one thing, you won't have it for something else. I love that. But at the same time... Gran Turismo isn't as strict in that regard as something like Toka Race Driver, where any mistake you make gets really blown out of proportion. Whereas on Gran Turismo, you just feel like, oh, I shouldn't have bought that car, but at least I can go back to another event, earn a bit of cash, and buy the right one. I like that. Gran Turismo has a good balance between being realistically competitive in terms of the cars that you're up against and the cars that you need to buy, but also it's not so realistic that it sucks the joy out of it. So I think both franchises have a strong thing in their favour. For Gran Turismo, it's that balance, and for Forza, it's the balance between realism and fun. So I think that's a very strong point in favour of either of them. And I actually value both of those things probably just as much, actually. And the final thing for Forza is similar to Gran Turismo in a way, because, of course, I mentioned that I love Gran Turismo's focus on real-world cars, cars that you can actually see. With Forza, for me, the difference is I love what Forza has always done, not so much when it comes to individual car choices, excuse me, but more so when it comes to manufacturers. The manufacturers that they have in the game are so varied. And in fact, if you put the manufacturer lists of Forza and Gran Turismo next to each other, you can really see defining things. Just by looking at the manufacturer list, it tells you so much about the game. Because if you look at Gran Turismo, you'll see names like Jensen, Ginetta, Holden, FPV, Buick, Land Rover. These companies which probably wouldn't be super high on most people's lists. It would be stuff like Ford, Ferrari, McLaren. Those would be the obvious choices. But Gran Turismo has these smaller, sometimes more classic or more obscure names... Or sometimes ones like Daihatsu, Fiat, Abarth, Autobianchi, or however you pronounce it. Those less obvious, but also real-world manufacturers. And again, that speaks into what the franchise has always been like. You look at the list on Forza, you've got Koenigsegg, Mosler, Joss, Devon, the Reliant Supervan on the Horizon games... It tells you so much about the franchise, because you can instantly see, oh, they're going for these kind of cars. These less appreciated, but really cool exotics. Sports cars, supercars, Le Mans cars, but then also, especially in the Horizon games, you've got the more oddball stuff, like the, the Utes, or the Reliance Supervan, or the Bubble Car, or stuff like the old school Land Rover. I love that. I love that you can immediately get a vibe of both franchises just by looking at the manufacturer list. And to me, that is something which I actually, I think, like more about Forza, because the manufacturers that are on there are some of the most desirable in the world. And for someone like me, who has such a huge amount of love, in particular, for three of them, Maserati, Panos, and Mosler. Those are my three favourite manufacturers of the Forza franchise, and they are so well represented. There are so many Maseratis, so many Panos models, and, I mean, one Mosler is more than enough. 
Gran Turismo, on the other hand, has others which I love, which they had earlier, for instance. So this isn't a one-sided thing, because Gran Turismo had stuff like Chaparral way earlier than Forza did, and I would say still with better cars. Because Forza has Chaparral, but it's an okay car. It's not as dominant as Chaparral is known for being. And others like that where... It's the more oddball choice, almost, or like Jay Leno's tank car on there. I love both of the routes that the games took, but for me, with Forza in particular, I do love the selection of manufacturers that they have. And of course, some get lost or left behind. Panos isn't there anymore, which is a real bummer for me. Uh, Spiker, I don't believe, is in there anymore. And obviously, cars get left behind, but the fact that they do focus on those kind of manufacturers really does appeal to me. And there are still some which neither franchise, fe uh, neither franchise feature, which I wish they did. I mean, where's Skoda? I know that's a weird question, but as I've said before, I'm a huge Skoda fan. They make some excellent performance cars, some excellent rally cars, some great classic cars. We even feature them in Unsung Heroes. Uh, an outstanding car, in fact, with a 100% victory race in or victory rate, I should say, in the real world. Do not underestimate Skoda. But, uh, yeah, those are the five things that I love about both franchises, and, of course, I'd love to hear down below what you love, especially if you've played both, and especially if you've played more than one in both, because then you can get much more of an overarching view. In summary, if you haven't played one but you have played the other, say you're a Forza fan or you're a Gran Turismo fan, maybe you've come to my channel because I cater to both audiences, but you haven't personally played both, I would urge you to try to. Don't necessarily try to buy the latest one even. I specifically would not say that either franchise's current game is the best. No way near, in fact. If you are completely new to the Forza franchise, I would recommend trying Forza 2, Forza 4, Forza Horizon 3. If you're new to the Gran Turismo franchise, I would recommend trying Gran Turismo 2, Gran Turismo 4, and Gran Turismo probably 5, maybe 6, but more so 5 for the career mode. So they are not the latest games. Horizon 3 is close to it, but especially Forza 2 and Forza 4 in particular, I think are the best of the franchise. So, you know, you can pick up an Xbox 360 for far less money now. You can pick up a PS3 for far less money. You can even pick up a PS1 if you want to, to get Gran Turismo 2, for instance. I wouldn't recommend it, because you can play it on the PS3 anyway, and save it, that's what I do. But yeah, check out the older games. There's so much to still be enjoyed. After all, that's why I'm still reviewing cars from well over a decade ago in both franchises. So if you haven't played them both, and you get the opportunity to, because they're not overly expensive, and you don't need an internet connection to enjoy it on your own, then I'd urge you to try it, <laughs> basically. So that's it for this particular pick, and of course I'll see you guys next week. So I would appreciate, once again, help if any of you out there do have experience with podcasts before and know what you're doing, at least more so than me, which wouldn't take much because I've never done it, then I'd appreciate the help with that. And uh, that's about it. So I'll see you guys next time. And as always, thanks for watching.